All right, I want to talk about how you can access websites that you're building on your desktop. So I'm on my MacBook Pro here. I'm using brackets. And I've built a couple of web pages here, and I've saved them in different locations. Brackets has the Live Preview tool. So I've taken this page, and using the Live Preview tool, I've opened it up in Chrome. And this is the page right here from brackets. So pages being displayed from brackets live preview. Uh, the address is 127001 followed by a port number. And this is what brackets does. It runs a little node server to let you view your current project folder, whatever you have open. If I uh, open up control shift H here. So this folder that I have open is viewed as a project by brackets. So I can take any HTML file, click on Live Preview, and it's going to run that page using the port number that it's picked to display that. You can replace the 127.0.0.1 with the word localhost, like this if you want. does the same thing. Localhost and the 127.0.0.1, it's the same thing. It's the name for your current computer. Now, if you have a web server installed, like MAMP, which I have installed and I have it up and running here, localhost, without a port number, is going to point to a root folder for MAMP. And what I've done is I've taken a copy of this page and I've changed the HTML inside of it, and I have it running inside of a folder this is my folder name, and here's the file name. Same HTML file name, just a different folder. It's a different location on my computer. I can use 127.0.0.1 and then the folder name and the file name, or I can use localhost, the folder name and the file name. Or, if I know the external IP address, or the IP address on my network for this file, I can access it that way. And that's what I have here in this next tab. This is the address for my computer on my Wi-Fi network. So how do I find out what that number is? Well, if you open up Terminal or uh, the command prompt in Windows, ifconfig is what you would use on Mac, or if you're on Windows, it's ipconfig, all one word. I run that command, and it gives me a whole bunch of information about the network. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Really, all that I'm looking for is inside here, I will find inet followed by an address. This is the address right here. It starts with 192.168. That is the internal network created by my router. So my home Wi-Fi network, I've got a router. It is creating addresses for every single device that connects. Right now, my MacBook connected to my router. The router is viewing my computer as this address. So on my current computer, I have MAMP running. So if I type in this number, I'm pointing to my own computer. It's just it's being routed through my router and back to my computer. If I go to 127.0.0.1, I'm also talking about my computer, but it's just it's a loopback address. So my web server knows when I make that request that I'm talking about my own computer. It doesn't have to go anywhere to find the folders and the files. If I use this one, my web server is going out through the router back to it to locate this address. And then there's the page. It is the same file. It's just being addressed two different ways. My web server is serving up the exact same file two different ways. So how does that help with my mobile phone? Well, from my mobile device, what I can do is use this address. As long as my phone is using the same Wi-Fi network, my computer, my laptop, and my phone are both using the same router, they're on the same Wi-Fi network, I can now use this address on my phone. So that's what I've done here. All right, I've opened up a new tab here, google.ca, doesn't matter what the address is, it's just it's a new tab. I've gone into the development tools. So right here, developer tools. That's in Chrome right here. 
go to more tools, get to developer tools. That brought me to here. Inside the menu that's inside the dev tools, there's even more tools, and I wanted the remote devices section. So it's kind of a cascading menu. I start from the main one to get to these tools, and then from here, go to remote devices. That brings me down to this tab. This shows me the various devices that are connected to my Wi-Fi network. So Chrome is able to see that, hey, you know what? I have this mobile device. I've got a USB cable connecting my phone to my computer. Chrome needs the USB connection for this to work properly. And there it is. And then within this device right here, I have a couple of tabs open. And they're pointing to two different files inside of here. So if I want to look at this one, I'll say, yeah, okay, that's the one that I want to inspect. All right, so I'll close this. I don't need to see much of this. And there we are. This is the same web page. So back here, and there we go. So I have two copies here. This is the one that's actually on my phone. My phone is using this address to access this web page, which is being hosted on my laptop. On the laptop, I'm using the exact same address to access the exact same page. So I need the USB connection between my phone and my computer so that Chrome can show me what's going on here. If you don't care about looking at it here, you don't need the USB connection. If all you want to do is load this web page on your phone to test and see what it looks like, you just need to get that address right there. You need to have a web server, like Apache within MAMP or ZAMP or WAMP. There's a whole bunch of these different programs that you can use. MAMP is the one right here. This is the free version of MAMP. I've downloaded it. I've got it running on my computer. With this running, I saved I had a folder and I saved this file inside of there and now I just need the IP address and that was with ifconfig or ipconfig. There you go. Now you know how to look at web pages on your phone that you're developing on your laptop as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network. Alright, hope this helped. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.